everybody, I'm Esther Emery, and today you found the channel where I just sit and tell a story. Um, I have Stella here with me today. I don't know if she's going to make it through all of my stories, but she wanted to be near me, so here she is. Today I'm going to tell a couple of stories around the question of herbal medicine or natural medicine. Why am I into it? When I have experienced resistance to that and how I process all of that. And, and I'll also explain what I mean by the title when I say I don't believe in herbal medicine. So the first story begins with me sitting, oh, this is, gosh, more than a year ago now, more than a year ago, sitting on the road right above the house, um, unable to chase after my then two-year-old. Sadie had just run down the road and I couldn't get after her. I couldn't breathe well enough to stand up and run after my child. She's a strong-willed kid. All of my kids are strong-willed. We're not apologizing for that. We're a strong-willed family, and there are some advantages to that. Um, but as in a two-year-old, it can be very trying. And what had happened that day was that um, her dad had driven into town, and she really wanted to go along. This is Sadie, not Stella, my other daughter. Really wanted to go along. And we had said, no, she couldn't. Um, and so her response to that was to run after the truck. She ran after the truck as fast as her little two-year-old legs could carry her. And I, as her mom, came up our steep hill. And at the top of the hill, I had an asthma attack. I fell down. I was not able to even stand or even really call for help. And my two-year-old was running down the road out of sight. So I've had asthma most of my life. It's been very under control most of my life. There are medicines, which can be very helpful for people who have asthma. And mine is also very triggered by particular environmental factors. I have a sensitivity to wood smoke. I also have sensitivities to dust, um, seasonal allergies, and stress. Um, so last spring, a little more than a year ago, I had all of those things in place and my asthma was pretty bad. When the wind kicks up, there's, there's mic noise. There's noise on the mic, so we're gonna wait for the wind to pass by. It feels good, doesn't it? Finally cooling down. So there are several things that I have done to execute this change in my health from last spring to this summer. Um, and I can, I'll communicate the specifics of that. Um, but before I do, I wanna share that I don't think it's in the specifics. I've gone through a transition over the last few months, particularly this early spring um, and early summer, I, where I just, am, I'm changing how I think about health and medicine. I, I'm changing how the whole concept of health and medicine is working in my brain. I've been sort of interested in herbal medicine for a long time. Um, but I've found my attitude toward it is very similar to my attitude towards regular medicine. We've got a hen over there who's just laid an egg. I don't know if you guys can hear her happy song. We're sitting not too far from the barn. We've got a happy hen in there. Um, so I was saying that I used to think of herbal medicines the same way I would think of prescription medicines. You have a problem, you find the thing that fixes it, you take that medicine and it makes the, me it makes the problem go away. It's like a big fat eraser, you know? And I think of this about my, about my life. You know, there's things about my life I don't like. So I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna look for that eraser to erase that thing about my life that I don't like. And that's really how I thought about medicine. Then I went through a journey of finding the value in very ordinary plants. The plants that I'm using these days for my tinctures, my preparations, my teas, many of them are literally underfoot. And not just because I'm in the woods. They're underfoot all over. And I started to think, how is it, how does it even make sense that you can contribute to your health in such a visible way with plants that are all around you and completely free? Spun my head, spun my head a little bit, thinking about, wow, some of the things I've been thinking about, medicine as being inaccessible, medical care, good medical care is being inaccessible, and yet some routine self-care things can be done by plants that are widely available and 
largely free or available very cheaply. So that's one major change. But the other is realizing that I cannot specifically connect one medicine to one ailment the way I used to. When I tell you about my recovery from asthma or my kind of dramatic health improvement over the last year, it's, there's no wonder drug here. There's no, there, there's no it chemical. You know, there's no thing that did it. it it's a lot of things. And it's an attitude change rather than trying to erase the, the, the complexities of my body, trying to make my body go away so I don't have to think about it. I've entered into a process of kind of conversation with my body, you know? I've got some of this, body. What do you think? Should we have some of this? How does that feel? Oh, yeah. Is that okay? All right. Well, let's try a little more. Oh, okay. We're tired of that. Let's try something else. <laughs> Sounds... I mean, it's emotional because it sounds so childlike. When I say that I don't believe in natural medicine, or I don't believe in herbal medicine, what I'm telling you is that I don't have to take anybody's word for it. The particular pattern and attitudes that have been helpful to me are, are not taking someone else's word for anything. It's a very playful, very creative process of being vulnerable and opening myself up to these very standard available ordinary plants, mostly weeds, and saying to my body, uh, do you like this? Should we have a little bit of this? Uh, what do you think? Oh no, we're tired of that. Okay, let's try something else. And allowing um, my, my own perceptions of how I feel to be the most important determining factor of what action I take. Now, I think that's different from the allopathic medical structure in which I go to a doctor's office and no matter how wonderful the doctor is, and I know wonderful doctors, believe me, this is not a criticism of medical professionals. I hear doctors saying, we want patients to take responsibility. We want patients to want to be healthy. We want patients to inform themselves and enter into a dialogue. And I think, well, yeah, that's what we want, but we're being told that we don't know anyway. <laughs> so it's hard to find the motivation to really research when you're working in a system that doesn't take your knowledge at, into account, doesn't value your experience, your experiential knowledge of yourself and the health of your body. So when people say, do you believe in herbal medicine? I have to say, this is not a point of faith for me. This is experience. This is knowledge based in experience. When I first wanted to do a video on this topic, I did a good 15 minute rant, just hot under the collar the whole time. If you uh, want to know how to make Esther mad, tell me that I haven't done my research. It makes me crazy. Because if I ever was going to actually have an idol, a problematic emphasis on some particular worldly thing, it would probably be research. I was raised to believe in getting good knowledge out of books. And it's uh, something that I do a lot of. Spend a lot of time getting information, comparing information, um, reading about things. So I was pretty upset that someone would suggest to me, I don't remember if it was a comment or an email, um, but it happened several times, that my interest in herbal medicine was a, a sign of ignorance or a sign that I wasn't doing my research properly. Now that whole video that I took that day had no sound or there was something wrong with the sound. So you could see I was very passionate about something, but you couldn't hear the sound. So there you go, all the better. I, I was able to come back to it literally months later when I'm perfectly relaxed and share some of the same content. But I've realized since then that partly why I was so upset that day is that it doesn't feel good to have your own experience undermined. If I say to you, this is what happened that has been helpful for me and my health, then I kind of need that to be respected. I need that to be respected as my perspective. And I also need to have the discipline and care to not try to replicate that for other people in a way that isn't actually possible to replicate. I don't, I don't think I'm saying to you that if you have asthma, you need to go through exactly the steps that I've gone through and that'll solve your problems. I think what I'm saying is that plants are powerful and so is listening to your body and being able to have a relationship 
between your perceptions of how your body is is healthy and healing, a relationship between that and these wonderful, capable plants that are all around us and available, um, very, very cheap or free of charge, um, is a powerful thing. That relationship is a powerful thing. When I think about the homestead life, I think so much about capability, about capacity, and so much of that is related to your health. So it's it's possible to really hurt yourself homesteading. It's possible to wear yourself down. It's possible to build yourself up. And so much of that axis is around your health. And if you are able to maintain this instrument, the body and mind, in a way that makes it uh, efficient and capable and rested and wise and and uh, able to respond, responsive to situations. So I encourage you all to find one plant, maybe one weed, maybe one um, completely normal, accessible plant, and to find out what it does. Find out what it does for your body and maybe report back. I'm Esther Emery. Thanks for hanging out with me this afternoon. I hope you'll come back next week. And feel free to leave comments or uh, send emails or messages if you want to talk more about this. I'm always happy to meet new people. And I wish you all well. Have a great day.